Welcome everyone to Midland High Homecoming 2019. We are moments away from the start of tonight's game, which features the state's top ranked team, the Midland High Kimmicks, facing the Saginaw High Trojans. Welcome again, my name is Chris Stevens and I am with Hall of Fame coach Frank Altimore. And Frank, on paper, this appears to be a very lopsided game. We got Midland High at 4-0, number one team in the state versus Saginaw High. 0-4 and hasn't scored a point yet this year. Well, this is a perfect homecoming game for you. <laughs> it means that you're not, you, you don't have to really make too many preparations. The kids are, are busy. Their their minds sometimes are elsewhere. Yeah. They're getting ready for the dance, the homecoming parade, uh, tonight's festivities, what whatever. And so this is a perfect game to have as your homecoming. And hopefully everybody gets to play. Right. Because it should be on paper, it should be a romp for Midland High. Right. But looming next week, of course, is Mount Pleasant, which might might be the end up being the top game in the state next week. So how do you take care of business tonight and still be sharp for that game next week? Well, you let your starters play until you feel that you don't want them to play, and then you take them out and you get them ready. Yeah. We'll break for the national anthem. Frank, you've coached in a lot of these homecoming games as an assistant at Midland High, then as a longtime head coach at Dow High. Is it, is it different coaching in a homecoming game? Uh, yes and no. I mean, you, like I say, you're trying to minimize the effect of homecoming, and if you can do that, that's good. Mm -hmm. But you really are, are you're, you're, depending on your opponent, some nights we had an opponent that is very difficult, and you just tell the kids, hey, if, if I can get you in, I'm going to get you in. Yeah. If I can't get you in, I'm sorry. Yeah. And but but for the most part, we got mostly everybody in because we played 28 players. <laughs> Sometimes we only had 29 on the team. Right. But 20, 28 knew they were getting in the game. Yeah. So the next level, then hopefully we got them a chance to get in. Yeah. So how but, do you assess this game? I know you got your keys well, to the game coming up. I think we got to do keys to the game now, and we'll uh, we'll see what's going on as we. As we go on, we can assess it just by looking at that. And so mm -hmm. uh, we'll bring them up on our monitor. And this is Midland. And, and I have number one score early and often because you don't want to give them a chance to think that they can play with you. No hope. You just want to run them right off the field as mm -hmm. soon as you can. It's important in a game like this where you know you're going to be the victor because the other team hasn't scored a point, avoid a key injury. So late in the game or as the game goes on, Start pulling those key people out and give the other kids a chance to play. And this is also a night where you can really work on your kick game because you're going to get a lot of practice at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we go to Saginaw. And, and to me, when I played a team that was vastly superior, I, I would slow the game down to nothing. <laughs> I mean, just... How do you do that? Just, just don't snap the ball until it's absolutely necessary. Uh, don't throw uh, incomplete passes. You slow the game down and you try to keep them as close to you as you can. And you play tough defense. So you let them get anxious. I'll tell you, today's football, if you slow the game down, these coaches who are raised on Madden football, mm -hmm. they get nervous on the sideline. <laughs> so you play tough defense, 
and you try to reduce your turnovers and penalties. Yeah. That's how Saginaw High could win this game. Yeah. No, they can't win the game. I mean, honestly. Yeah. If you look at the two records of the two of them, it would it would be just a major absolute upset if that happened. But hey, stranger things have happened too. Yeah, we were looking at the roster earlier for Saginaw High and they have five freshmen on it as well as four sophomores and they carry only 32 kids on the team. And you were saying they don't even have a JV or freshman they team. They don't have so. a JV or freshman team. But Midland High will be receiving the ball and Saginaw will be kicking here shortly. Midland High conversely, I mean, they've got a dynamic offensive team, Frank. I mean, led by Al Money at quarterback, Chami Johnstone, Drew Johnson, a guy who you really like as the running back, Bryce Albrecht, Eli Gordon. I mean, they got weapons all across the field. They, they're loaded. I mean, they, they have players. But here's what else they got. They have three DBs to cover everybody. Right. You know, and that's to me, that's a crucial issue in today's football. Team speed. Now, here's the problem in the games I've seen. They play man-to-man -man defense. And these other guys are running zone patterns. So... You know, it's kind of a funny deal, but I don't know. Yeah. Seconds away from homecoming 2019 starting. There's the whistle. And we are underway. Short kick. Taken at the 27. Johnstone breaks loose. He's going. No flags. Headed to the end zone. Tommy Johnstone. Touchdown, Midland High. Well, Frank, early and often, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> you can't get any earlier <laughs> than that. I mean, that is. Nine I seconds could, into the game. I could see it coming. I said, oh, no. He's gone. 73 yards. Well, I wonder how that ranks in terms of earliest touchdowns in middle high history or quickest touchdowns in middle high history. <laughs> On for the kick is number six, Max, Max Fisher, one of the best kickers in the league. Max Fisher is outstanding. That's a nice article in the paper about Max. Yep. Holding his out money. Up. And good. Seven high, middle and high at the 11.51 mark of the first quarter. Well, Frank, that. Here we go. Now, you'll see right in the middle, Saginaw High just allows it. It's a short kick. Midland is able to punch a, a nice little hole right in the center. There's the lead block, and Johnstone shakes one and then just outruns. Untouched. The, uh, number four just. He did barely got it. It tagged him. So that's. Uh, I would say he got that at the 28, Frank. So I think yeah. that's going to be 72 yards. Very explosive. Very explosive. How surprised would you be, Frank, if Middle High tried a short kick to try to pos get possession well, of it right now? As I said, <laughs> these are the nights. Well, I don't think they'll short kick. I think they'll a pooch kick in the corner. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what they do. You're working on your kick game tonight. Yeah, because you're going to get you know your extra point, your field goal, uh, your kickoffs. You're going to you know you're probably only going to get one kickoff return, and you're going to get lots of punt returns. Yeah, I was talking to Eric Men earlier today, and he said uh, tonight's mission is to be absolutely spot on with everything you do, execution at the highest level, all phases of the game. And here's Fisher's kick, deep into the end zone. Wow, Frank. Yeah. Pretty impressive, like you say. He's, he's a weapon. I mean, that's exactly all I can say is he, he's one of those weapons that you have and yeah. makes a difference in the ball game. What is it about the city of Midland that uh, creates so many good kickers? It's the water. <laughs> it's the only thing I can figure. It's I mean, we're, be we're the going water. back to the 70s, aren't we, with great the, kickers? We go back. Sovereign, wasn't he a great kicker Sovereign in Midland? was outstanding. Even before then, a kid named Ron Dudzik. Okay. And we, uh, we've always had great kickers. First and ten for the Well, Midland High's defense is playing outstanding this year. Frank, the four games, they're fast, they get to the ball. What, what, what impresses you? Well, what impresses me is the fact that their defensive line creates a new line of scrimmage <laughs> about two yards deep in the backfield. And the result of that is that they don't, they don't over 
uh, stretch themselves. And, and then the second part is you'll notice each night, each game, each play as we go, that they fly to the ball. They do. So there's a crowd around the ball. That pass was completed. Uh, uh, Trevon Laster's the quarterback, and that pass was completed for a loss of about a yard. So it'll be second and 11 coming up for the Trojans. The Trojans, by the way, Frank, here's a statistic for you, have rushed for minus 69 yards this season. So you can say they have no running game, right? Absolutely not. Laster again in shotgun. There we go, Frank. You called it the penalties. Well, that's just it. You know, they're you've got Taking to avoid those kind of things. Midland's in their uh, what I call their 30 defense. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, they're playing five. They're playing eight secondary players which they are at their best in this kind of a defense because those eight guys all run to the ball right their speed gives teams a lot of problems especially in that uh, defensive line so last year again we got second 16 now from the nine or 14 yard line excuse me Caught at the 29 yard line by looks like Armand Goods, number 21. Now that was a ball that was thrown short. Yeah. The, the, the coverage was, was good, and then he's expecting a bomb, and the ball was thrown short. The guy, yeah. we used to call that a comeback pattern, but you know, we ran it as a comeback, not as a <laughs> short. Last was under heavy yeah. pressure, too. He threw that yeah, on his he, back he, foot back going foot, backwards. Flipped it up. So third and one from the 29. Last in the shotgun. That's a forward pass, it looks like, Frank. Number eight. Number one. What do we have here? We have a fumble. fumble. They're calling a the middle high ball. Recovered by number one. Bryce Albright. Frank, I thought that was a forward pass. No, I thought it was a lateral. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was a lateral. Do we have a replay we'll see on it that? on the replay if they give it to us. But it was, okay. So okay, here we go. Watch where the quarterback is. And watch where number eight, uh, Jamonte York is. Well, oh, yes. Oh, Frank. I think that was forward. Yeah. Not the officials didn't. You know? And I didn't. No. All right, middle and high takes possession at the 16-yard line. Money. Shotgun. Flag on the play. Looks like we have an injured player. Substitution. Okay, here's the thing on the fumble. Watch where the guy reaches for the ball. He's going to flip it back. Now watch, it's behind him. See where his hand tucked it? We need a different that angle on it. I thought he tossed that from the forward. All right, so he, we have a. He did toss it forward, <laughs> but it went backwards. <laughs> All right, so we have a penalty here. Did you catch what it was, Frank? Uh, yeah, too many men on the field. For okay. Him. All right, so at first and five. They still from the twelve. They're still sorting that out. Money to Johnson. Johnson up the middle, crashing down to about the seven yard line. No, he's about a, the six. He, he's an absolute bull. Yeah. He missed he missed you'll he missed the hole. He cuts to the outside, he's in the end zone walking. Right. But he's he, he really likes to run into people. You know, I like that in a, in a guy like that. Now here comes a, a whole new set of wow. players. Now I love this. Yeah. So you take take your first team out. Here comes the second team in. Led by Jarrett Wagner, the new quarterback. Whole new team coming in. Wagner gives the 16. DeMarco Warren into the end zone. Four yard touchdown for Midland High. Now that is homecoming at its best yes. right there. And that is such a good thing that Coach Eric Methner just did. Yeah. 
I mean, your future, your future is out there. And watch, watch the cut. I love the cut. Yes. By 16, he gets in Warren. there. Okay. And there's the cut. No, 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 untouched. Right. Untouched. Frank Beautiful. David had two touchdowns where they haven't been touched yet. That's uh. Demarco that's Warren, 12th yeah. 12th grader. Fisher again. 14 nothing Midland High at the 947 mark of the first quarter. And Frank, I would say Middle High is not going to let up anytime soon. <laughs> they want to get well, this into uh, Mercy clock or uh, running clock in the second half. 35 point difference, and I'm sure they will. Well, th the really sad part of this is that they're just not enough players at Saginaw right now. Yeah. And this is a at one time in the. 90s, they were the real team, uh, and had such great players and Charles I mean, Rogers, Charles Lamar Rogers. Woodley, NFL players there, and it's really kind of sad to see, isn't it, Frank? It I really mean, you is. You go from the powerhouse like they were to a well, program that's the whole just Saginaw system. Sad. I mean, Arthur Hill was a powerhouse mm -hmm. for 50 years. Right. You know, it's just uh, it's a sad, sad state of affairs. Fisher kicks it short this time, Frank. It's the pooch kick. Number two fumbles it. Picked up by De 20. Dead ball. Dennis Eli Gordon. Fumble uh, sagging a high, recovered Midland by Eli Gordon. They're marking it at the 20 yard line of Saginaw. So again, Kimmicks get great field position. And here's the replay, Frank. So there's that little pooch kick that we, you know, we you have to guard against when you play Midland. Uh -huh. And you see the, the deep guy took it. So now they're going to mark it on a 20, and um, you cannot advance the kick. But money again. Shotgun. Em empty backfield. Screen. Oh, Bryce Albrecht. He's got room. Brought down at the four. So again, it'll be a first and goal from the four. And last time, Metner switched in his second unit. Let's see if he does that again. You know, this is one of those games, Frank, so far. Middle can do whatever they want, right? I mean, they're, they're basically unchallenged on whatever call play call they make. It's first and goal from the four. What are the odds Johnson gets the ball this time? Frank? Oh, the big guy's carrying it. There's no question. Money under pressure. Standing all by himself Touchdown. is Tommy Johnstone. Touchdown, Midland High. Johnstone second TD of the game. Now, th you're going to see terrific pass protection. And this is what you got to love right here. Now watch what happens. He's under pressure. 54 never gave up and did a great job. Connor O'Malley yeah. did a fabulous job of never giving up, came back and, and did a great job. No one was within uh, 10 yards of Johnstone. Well, Johnstone got lost back yeah, there. Yeah, he know. did. Fisher again. Up and good. 21 nothing. 9-27 mark of the first quarter. So Frank, now you're on the Saginaw High sideline right now. What's what's going on over there? They're looking for the bus. See if it's warmed <laughs> up. <laughs> That's usually what happens. Um, you know. Is there anything you can say to your kids? You're the head coach. What do you say? You're you're Derek Wyatt, the head coach. First year. Here's, you're here's, down 21 nothing. 29 27 here's in the first quarter. Say, every play is a new play. Forget about the scoreboard. Forget about what's happening. Every play is a new play. And you play every play as a new play. You play every down as a new set of downs. Don't worry about the score. All we're trying to do is play a play at a time. Next play. Next play. Yeah. Right. And so that, that's how you got to. And that's the attitude that coaches have to take. Even in college, when these games are 30-something, then the six, and then before you know it, it's tied. More well, with the ball. Keep, Brought down by John Stone and a couple other Kimmicks. Albrecht was in on the play, as well as number 15. That is Hunter Nagel. Midland's kickoff teams, coverage teams, 
are outstanding. But, but Frank, it, I, it, I don't understand Saginaw's strategy having one player at the 10 yard line and that's no one else back. It, it just makes no sense to me. Well, how do you explain that? I don't I, know. I don't. But, I don't yeah. explain it. So here we are. Terrible field position again for Saginaw High. First down at their own 11 yard line. Laster again as quarterback. Number nine. Looks like a delay game. Oh, motion it's penalty. The right guard decided to point. <laughs> and once your hands are set, you're set. He's been watching a lot of. Too much NFL. Too much NFL. I mean, you yeah. know, where they go down and they're really not set yet. They do all their pointing and then they get set. So now Saginaw's at thrown six. Danger zone for them. Expect a lot of pressure from Midland coming up. Oh, is a safety in the making. Right now it's a safety. Lobs it. Caught by number two, Dylan Moore at the 10 yard line. So Frank, you're in a game like this, you're up 21 nothing. It's not even at the nine minute mark yet of the first quarter. If you're middle high, can you pick up bad habits when you're playing an opponent that's inferior to you like this? I, I don't think so. I mean, you just, again, you say to those, play, those players the same thing. Play hard, one game, one, one play at a time. You can't worry about the score. Don't let the score influence what you're doing. Yeah. And don't lose your composure and do something stupid like get in a fight and get knocked out of this game and the next game. That, that was always the thing that bothered me. That play was going nowhere. Eli Gordon in on the tackle very quickly. Gordon's one of the quickest players on this team. I mean, he has Gordon, got some speed. Eli Gordon is a veteran, veteran yeah. player, hard to fool. I was very impressed last week with how well he covered the uh, players from Heritage who had an outstanding receiving crew. So now we have third down and about 17 yards for the Trojans at their own three yard line. I would think this is a play where you just try to get some positive yardage, maybe a run quarterback keeper. We'll see. Oh, well, they're going to throw it. Too much time. Too much time. Delay game. See, these are the kind of things that these these lack of discipline penalties. As a coach, they drive you crazy. Right. There are two things that drive coaches crazy. One, lack of discipline penalties, and two, having to take a timeout when you don't have to. Yeah. So they just drive you crazy. Now Saginaw's at its own two-yard line. Laster gets it. Number five comes in unblocked. That is Ty Fagan. Frank, you called it. Safety? It's a safety. Yeah, there's no question. It was good. Fagan was first to the ball. I knew that was a safety in the making. Yep. Here we go. No, Watch number five. Frank's unblocked coming in. Johnson's and, there. And Paul Velas Veliski. Believe. Midland is just too much, too fast. And Solomon Thomas, that's the first time we've called his name. He's in there. Solomon Thomas is another outstanding Kimmick lineman who uh, is going to be playing college football in two, his future. Two way player. Excellent two way player. Number 52, keep your eyes on him. He's, uh, he's an excellent offensive lineman as well as an excellent defensive lineman. He's being recruited by several Division II GLIAC schools right now. So the Trojans will be kicking off from their own 20 after the safety. The score 23 to nothing, Midland High. You can punt or you can kick off with the tee, and Saginaw High has chosen to kick off with the tee.
Do we have a formation issue going on, Frank? Yeah, we have too many men on one side, so he's telling the number 84 there to move over to the other side. So now I think we're ready to get this thing rolling. DeMarco Warren brought down at the Saginaw 34-yard line. You Warren see that? with the carry. You've already put Midland in four-down four territory. So no matter what else happens, they're just going to roll it right in. Yeah. And again, now, if you're a coach in this situation, you're just going to run it in. You're going to work on your running game and have something on film for that. Well, let's see what happens here. Money. Fakes it to Johnson. He's looking deep. He sees Johnstone again. Caught. Touchdown. Touchdown. Oh, His so third of the game. So much for my thinking. <laughs> Money to Johnstone. Here we go, How Frank. How about that score early, Look score Look at the often. time he's got to throw, Frank. Yeah, he's, they're, they're, well, everybody's standing up. Releases it from the 41. Nice play by Johnstone. Beautiful catch. The cover guy lost it in the air, and Johnstone doesn't lose. His father played for me. He was a great Rob. receiver yep. in, uh, in the late 80s. Fisher's kick up and good. 30 to 0 at the 727 mark. Yes, that's right. 727 mark scores 30 to 0 Midland High. So, four, Frank, four, I got a question for four you. Four and a half minutes, <laughs> and we've got 30 to nothing. Yes. At what point, if you're Eric Metner, do you say, okay, I need to sit down money and all Johnstone and all and all these key guys? When do you start making that decision? Well, not, not in the first quarter. <laughs> I mean, you gotta, I mean, they gotta get their work in too. Yeah. You know, they gotta get their work in. So they'll probably get pulled and then they may come back on for a series in the second half. But at some point they're gonna get pulled fairly yeah. soon. I mean, we're going to see certainly another touchdown and the mercy clock doesn't start till the second half. Right. So strategy wise for middle high on kickoffs, are they do you think they're trying to do different things here? Yes, absolutely. You can see right here. This is a kick. The pooch kick in the corner down at the 12. There's the booming kick into yeah. the end zone. Uh, Max Fisher has it all. Yeah. He has it all. Dylan Moore caught that and fumbled it. Now he uh, dropped his knee at the 13 yard line of Saginaw High. And again, Frank, you know, we talked about earlier in the broadcast is middle high next week has Mount Pleasant. And that's going to be a big time battle. Can a game like this hurt you in any way? Not at all. Not at all. OK. No, no. you. Because you're getting away you know, with things too easy, Frank. Yeah, I, mean, I know that, do but doesn't, you it doesn't do. matter. You, you probably haven't practiced this week against these guys anyway. It, no, it doesn't matter. You, all you're doing is a nice little tune-up. You know, have a little practice, throw the ball, get your running game, do any little mistakes that will happen. No. Well, let's see what Laster does here. Low snap. Boy, what, five Kimmicks in on that, led by Thomas. What hurts you when you have a big game coming up next week is a big game this week. Yeah. Because you get a little bit beat up mm -hmm. and you have to expose all the things that you want to do to win this game. So now yeah. I don't have to expose anything. Yeah. Saginaw now is at their own seven yard line. So they have second down and 17 yards to go. Again, the spread formation. They always have four wide receivers, don't they, Frank? Yes, they do. Not enough blocking up front. Number five can go on un unscathed. <laughs> 24 with the ball. And number five made the tackle. That was Jamel Bodyford. Tied the ball. And he was brought down by Fegan again. Came off the corner, untouched. 
and you are right, Frank. He is untouched. I mean, they don't have a man nope, on him at all. No, he's he untouched. can do whatever he wants to do right now. Hunter Nagel as well was on that play. Paul Valeski is another one of the grub linemen. And Thomas is on the defensive end there on the left side. Laster. Third down. Option. Going nowhere. You know, it's interesting. One year we brought very, down by Eli Gordon. We were very fortunate. We had Denny Stoltz from Michigan State who yep. was on our coaching staff. And Denny was in charge of pass protection. And one of the most important things he taught us was if you're going to throw the ball, you better protect your quarterback. Figure out how to protect him, then throw the ball. And uh, in today's football, the rule is if they're coming, get rid of it fast. You know, if they're not coming, then you can do some things. Well, I'll tell you, the, the Patriots believe in your uh, ph that philosophy. Absolutely. They protect Tom Brady. You, you must learn to protect that quarterback. It's fourth down and about 18 yards to go. If they don't hurry up, they're going to get another penalty here, Frank. Well, they're going to get another penalty. Looks like Jamonte York. Short kick. Bryce Albrecht at the 39-yard line. Heading left. There's a flag on the play. Albrecht's going to score, but they're, oh, no. He brought, was brought down, and there's another flag. It looks like a high tackle yep, there, Frank. It, there's a. At the one-yard line. Half-yard line. So two flags on the play. Probably a block in the back, and the other one is a horse collar. Yeah. Now, the block in the back, if that's what it is, that has to tick off Metner because you don't want to see that on a punt return. You know, sometimes, score. though, you're right. But sometimes it, it happens Put where. Block in the back, you're right, Frank. Sometimes it happens where the guy, you're blocking him, and he turns on you. Yeah. And really, there's not a whole lot you can do. Here we go. Here's a replay here. Let's see if we can pick up where it was called. I don't see it, but they called face mask on number 24, Jermel Bodiford for Saginaw. So the ball is going to be spotted at the five yard line of Saginaw High. And we're going to punt it all over again. You know, it's, it was a pretty good kick. Yeah, it was. I mean, the kick went out here to the 40 yard line. So let's see what and Albrecht again, does this time. This time he's calling a fair catch. Again, that's a very good kick. I wonder if that was under the instructions of Metner saying, we want to work on our offense a little bit, so just call a fair catch. Could be. Yeah. Could be. So the ball is going to be marked at the Saginaw 39-yard line. See, that's a 40-yard-plus kick. Yep. And the starters are still in the game, so money's trotting out to the huddle. Again, the score is 30 to 0, middle and high. We're still in the first quarter, folks. So, money with Johnson behind him. Hands it to Johnson up the middle. Crashes down to the 30 yard line. He is a load, Frank, isn't he? He is just a load. Isaiah Page, the linebacker, made that a good, good looking sophomore mm -hmm. for uh, Saginaw. Saginaw has some size. We were talking about that yeah, pregame. They do have I mean, some at, size. Yeah, number 52, uh, Isaiah Page, like you said, he's a big boy. So here we go. Second short for Midland. Money back to pass. Albrecht catches it. He'll be tackled. It looks like the push out of bounds at about the 20 yard line. Now so see, first down Midland. That was a nice pass by Money. Here, here's the thing about Money. Money throws a very catchable ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't throw, it's not, you know, a hard ball, you know, where a lot of, a lot of guys that throw, I, I should say, a heavy ball. Mm -hmm. He throws a nice light ball, it spins beautifully, has beautiful tone on it, and receivers love to catch those. How have you seen money improve this year, Frank? Well, first off, his composure. I mean, he's, 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 a, he's an excellent athlete, so, and he allows the athletic ability to achieve for him. But his composure back in the, in, at, at this point right here, now, see, he's just going to 
Gives it to Johnson. Gives it to Johnson. Get out of the, the way. And, but he, you know his composure is game. so much better. Yeah. Yeah. He, I was impressed. I was impressed uh, in his play last week against Heritage, and uh, and I watched him in the summer playing baseball. He, yeah. He's an outstanding player. But again, he's a money. Yeah. You, yeah, know, you know about that family. There's a standard there. <laughs> you know, you got to be good. Second three from the 13-yard line. If you're bad, you don't eat. <laughs> you know, it's Let's see what money does. My guess is they won't have him run much tonight. Here he is back to pass, rolling to his right. Oh, is that picked off? Yes, it was picked yep. off. So you see who got that, Frank? Number two. Dylan Moore, sagging a high ball. Money with an interception, that's his fifth of the year. Here we okay, go, Frank. So we're roll, gonna roll out here, and he gets, in my mind, way too much depth on this. And now he's gonna move forward. He gets his shoulder squared around, but he has eyes only for Johnstone. Yeah, three. I mean, there's you know a lot yeah. of other receivers out there. Three guys in coverage right yep. there on one guy. Well, Frank, this might be Saginaw's best field position of the night. They're at their own 20-yard line. Yeah, it is. It's going to be. So Laster again, the quarterback. So far, Saginaw has had zero success moving the ball. So Laster, quick pass. Caught, but immediately brought down. Nice play by Johnstone there, the left cornerback. You, you told me you're really impressed with the defensive backs. Of oh, Middle High. I just think they're fabulous. I, they, Albrecht, um, Gordon, J Gordon, Johnstone, those yeah. guys, they all run well. Yeah. They all, Max Fisher's back there. They run great to the ball. I like what they do. Eli Gordon is a great center fielder. So here we are, Saginaw. Second and 11 from their, oh, second and 12 from their own 18. Laster has some room this time. Quickly brought down, though, number five. Again, we're calling his name a lot. That's Ty Feagan. I see now Feagan ran by him and then, and then him. came back and caught him. Yeah. And you'll see what happened. You see, you'll watch Feagan here. He's going to come out there. He's going to make a nice little play. You see, he runs by him. Uh oh. Now he's going to have to retreat. And he brings and him down. Brings him down. Yeah. Right. So, from a middle high perspective on defense, Frank, is it is it about speed? Is that what you want? Is your number one quality as a defense? Uh, we used to have a rule: if you didn't run five flat, you couldn't play defense. <laughs> Third and nine. So there, there's a pretty good indication of what we're talking about. <laughs> Third and nine from the Saginaw, 21. Laster hands it off. Number 30. So here's an example. Brennan Milan. Again, great brings speed, them down. Great speed, great, in, great enthusiasm running to the ball. Eric Metner calls that flying around, getting to the ball. Now watch how nice this is. Okay, so there's the play. Thomas just missed Tom, he He slows him up. And now everybody's in on the play. Yeah. Well, another punt for Saginaw. Bodiford again. Drops back to about his own 10 yard line. Here's the kick. Now that one's not as good as what he's had before. No, down to the 35 at Saginaw High. 16 seconds left in the first quarter. 30 to 0 Midland. And looks like some of the reserves are coming to the game, Frank. See Zach Wilder going out there, number 33, and 83 is uh, Ryan Crush. And Money's still a quarterback. Money 
to Johnson up the middle brought down at the 29 yard line that looks like it'll be the last play of the first quarter. See that's what Johnson does now take a look that was a run of about seven yards. Yeah. Um, you say well that was a good run that was great but late in the fourth quarter and in a good game pretty soon that seven yards is a big seven yard. You don't want to see number 32. No, you you, you're not you're not messing with him <laughs> after that. No. So Frank going back to your keys of the game on point right middle high off the fast and furious start. Basically it buried him in the first quarter. Exactly. First four minutes of the first quarter. Uh, Metner's been able to substitute a lot, get a lot of guys in the game, yet at the same time he's been able to get his star players some action. I mean, John Stone, a couple touchdowns. You just want to keep sharp. So just well. trying to keep sharp. Yeah. You're playing against somebody you've never, you don't practice against. No, it's a great evening here. Great evening. So Midland is ready to go, and Saginaw still huddle up on its sideline. That's the thing about Midland High, and that's the way it's always been, Frank, ever since I've been in town, is Midland wants to play with a tempo, a pace. They want to play fast. What, what is it about playing fast that makes a team uh, well, energized? First and good? off, if you're in a fight, you never get tired of hitting, <laughs> you only get tired of being hit. So when you're Be playing fast, right? you're just continually putting the pressure on the other team. Middle high, second and three from the 29 off to Johnson. He's got running room. Escapes one tackle, maybe brought down at about the 14 yard line of Saginaw. Well, we saw Johnson up the middle. Now we saw him take a pitch, go around in, Frank. See, your, your comment about playing fast is, is critical to good football. And what happens is it's not what happened, you know, between plays. You know, you get your plays in and you get in the huddle, but they are fast off the ball. They are fast on defense when the ball is snapped. That to me is playing fast. Hurry up football is not playing fast. Mm -hmm. Look at them come off the ball. Look how nice the line moves. Johnson and, and moves the line there down to the 12 yard line. Well, yeah. his feet keep moving. Yeah. And the same thing with money. Yeah, you cannot tackle money high and you cannot tackle Johnson high. You, you yeah. have to take them low and make them fall down. Well on that play alone he had what three or four guys on him bringing right. him down. Right. So here we are second about five yards to go from the 11 yard line of Saginaw. To money this year is completing 69 percent of his passes he Leads the division with 14 touchdowns. He's having an excellent season. Johnson again up the middle. Three and four Trojans combined to bring him down. Just short of first down. Now Midland has the ball at the Saginaw seven with two yards to go for first down. DeMarco Warren's back in the ball game. Yeah. Touchdown this, machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's red be, zone hero here. I can see he's going to be a good one because he yeah. has that quickness. We'll see if he gets the ball. Second, two, middle and high. Well, he's probably going to go right around the right corner. Oh, a little pitch. quick pitch. Warren. Un oh, untouched, but no, he gets brought down in the end zone. Touchdown, yeah. middle and high. He was untouched until he got in the end zone. Yeah. Warren. Now I see what I like about Warren is he knows where the end zone is. Yeah. Knows where the end zone. He knows where the end zone is. Absolutely. Fisher on for the kick. I'll tell you, middle and high's blocking's been excellent tonight, too. They come off. The, this is what I mean about talking about playing fast. Mm -hmm. They come off the ball fast. Fisher's kick up and good. Middle and high now leads 37 to 0 early in the second quarter. And I guess if you want to give your uh, homecoming, okay, here we go, Frank. Replay on Warren's score. 
Midland toss. This is their quick pitch. And come around the corner, great block out of the corner, and we're in the end zone. Yes. I mean, that's just. Number 66, Eric Kalashek also delivered a key block on that, as well as Thomas. Now, they they like to run to Thomas' side when they need something to happen. I would, too. Because he can deliver. Yeah. I would, too. Thomas is 6'3", 265. In the tradition of great middle and high tackles, Frank. He, uh, when they ran the first touchdown, they ran on his side. Uh, when DeMarco Warren ran his first touchdown, he ran left on a little uh, sweep play, little zone left play. So getting back to your comment about the special teams, we've seen Fisher go deep, kick it out of the end zone. We've seen him angle kick, we've right. seen him short kick. Again, I don't understand Saginaw's thinking, having a man at 12 there and no one else back with them. They want him to take the ball, and he does at the 12. That's more. He's got no room. Brought down at the 22, we'll call it. Beautiful. Warren with Great the tackle. position. Great position. Warren, touchdown, and then he makes the tackle on special teams. Very good. You put players with speed who like to tackle. That's special teams? That, that's their special teams. Most teams say, okay, we're just going to put a whole bunch of guys in there. And, and you know as a coach mm -hmm. what they do. Midland does not do that. They'll put their starters, some of their starters, but their second team key players have got to be on that kickoff team. So here we are. Saginaw takes the ball. It's 22-yard line. Laster again at quarterback. No room. Brought down in the middle there. So we can get a number on that, Frank. That's number 63. Ethan Church. Ethan Church. Nice well, you know, tackle. Yeah, nice tackle. Nice play. You see what I mean about making that new line of scrimmage? Yeah. You know, I mean, first off, Saginaw can't protect their quarterback. Right. So you make that new line of scrimmage and put a little pressure on the outside and you got them. I want to get your opinion on this too, Frank, either before this play or after this play. Two way players, middle and high. Johnstone plays two ways. Albrecht plays two ways. Gordon plays two ways. Thomas plays. Good, bad. How do you, how do you come down to that? Each coach has his own philosophy on that. All right. Well, I want to get your I, philosophy after this play. Laster, shotgun formation. He's had no time to throw. Throws it up for grabs. Oh, a push off, it looked like, but no flag, incomplete pass. So, Frank, your philosophy on two-way players. My philosophy on two-way players is that if I have to have him play two ways, he's going to have to play two ways. But he can't play quarterback. He can't have your quarterback play two ways. And you can't have your running back play two ways. Um, other than that. Just it, too many hits? Just, or what just, you're thinking on that? I don't want to wear him out. Okay. I want to protect the quarterback as long as I can. Now, there have been times when I've had to play my quarterback back there because he's the best athlete. Uh, and there are times I've had to have a running back. But for the most part, um, I've always been a two-way player, two-way coach. Brought down, no time again. 24, Chase Mahavir on that, that tackle, on that sack. He had no time, Frank. Right. Middle High was in there almost before he caught the ball. Now, the, the difference is numbers. What, what's your numbers situation? You here we go, Frank. Uh, okay. Well, Mobbier's in see, there early. And see, he destroyed the block. Mm -hmm. He destroyed the block of the halfback. And that's what Millen does. They, they put pressure on you. Right. Hunter Nagel in on the sack as well. So Saginaw High again in pump formation. Deep for Midland. Is number 20, Eli Gordon, and number one, Bryce Albrecht. Again, deep in Saginaw territory. Albrecht, for, for example, right there at the 35-yard line. And the ball is going to go out of bounds at about the 39. Yeah, Midland, this is with Midland's normal starting position other than early in the game when they had this. Terrific starting position, but this is you're in four down territory, and you're just going to score another touchdown. Yep. 
So we asked earlier about subbing in your uh, second unit, and Jarrett Wagner, the quarterback, is coming in for money. And there's a host of new players from Midland High. They'll be taking over the ball at the 39-yard line of Saginaw. Warren's in the backfield. Along with Wagner. Wagner gives it to number 25. That is Timmy Kiffmiller. He is brought down at the 38-yard line of Saginaw. A gain of one yard. So this is a great opportunity for your second unit. Play the second quarter. Uh, Moms and dads are happy. <laughs> Players are happy. Right. They get their opportunity to get. See, every player wants to get on film. You are evaluated not by what you do in the game, but what you do on film. And coaches get a chance to see how well they're coaching the second unit. Wagner again hands it off to Warren. High tackle this time. Warren brought down at the 35-yard line. And and Midland High will now be faced with about a third and six from the Saginaw 35, and I would assume this would be four down territory for Midland. Oh, yeah, but you can see the difference in the fire off of the line. Sure. You know, sure. this is where this is the coaching point because this is your next substitute. Yeah. You know, so this is this is a crucial area here. Frank, notice he has number 62 in the backfield there. That's Owen Hacker. Power formation. Wagner hands it off to Warren. Warren, it's going to be short of the first down at about the 33 of Saginaw. So do you work on your punt game or do you try to get a fourth down, no, you a just, conversion? Just keep on going. Okay. These are the nights we say we're not punting <laughs> regardless. So fourth and about four at the 33. Wagner leads them to the line. Same play. No receiver split out wide, Frank. He has 62. Hacker. Power pitch. Warren cuts back. He's still on his feet. He'll be brought. No, he won't. <laughs> Three Trojans converge on the tackle before he's brought down at the 42. Big loss on the play. It'll be sagging a high's ball. Well, there was absolutely no blocking on that play. And sometimes, you know, uh, you got to say this second unit, this is why you're second unit. Right. I mean, there's just no blocking out there. Yeah. You know, and, and, they, and they've got to realize that. And you know what? They're going to get better because of it. Yeah. They will get better because of it. And, and Saginaw High has pride. They don't want to see Middle well, High get a. They're, they're still football players. Right. They're still football players. Okay, now you'll see it's going to be a quick toss. Okay, so there's the, there's the first block hold. Ethan and Church, the guy, guy fought off it. Now we're going to reverse our spinning. And we're, you can see right here, there aren't many blocks going on. Right. you got to stay with your blocks. Second high takes over possession in its own 42. Best field position of the night. 5.50 left to play here in the first half. And second high calls a timeout. That's, well, a, good, that's a good timeout. Get, get yourself squared around. Best field position of the night. Have a little patience. Well, if the score remains the same, Frank heading into half, that means the second half will start with the running clock. It has to be a 35-point difference before the running clock goes into effect in the second half. It will not go into effect in the first half, only in the second half. So Saginaw High has to do something to try to make itself feel good because there's still four games left in the season, right? I mean, you're playing the number one team in the state, Midland High, obviously exceptional team, but you still got four more games left to play, and you don't want to end the season with a winless record. So well, you got to figure only out game, ways. To the only game they can win is Arthur Hill. Arthur Hill, the rivalry game. The other games, I mean, that was sealed last week when the second worst team, third worst team in the league, Bay City Western put 55 up on them. Yeah. 
So that's really the only game Nia might have a chance of winning. Last tour. Waiting for the snap. No, number 19's in the game now. He, uh, that is Larry Atkins, new quarterback. Larry Atkins in at quarterback for Saginaw High. Lefty and his pass falls incomplete. So it'll be second down and 10 for the Trojans at their own 42. Frank, is there any rhyme or reason for Saginaw's offense? I mean, can you see no, anything no, I they're don't doing see. with I'm, purpose? I keep looking at, well, first off, I look at the lack of discipline in the huddle. Mm -hmm. And now I look at, you know, it takes them a while to get set up here. And they don't block. <laughs> they haven't blocked anybody. So 24. Keeps his feet moving. Now he's got room to run. He's got some room down the, the right side. Nice play there by Eli Gordon. That was 24. Jermel Bodyford with a nice run. And that will be a horse collar tackle there. You'll see it. Bodyford will refuse to come down, Frank. Yes, Watch he the did. replay. Came ran hard. He got into the mess, bounces off the mess, missed tackle, knocked down. And now here we go with a, a grab right here. I. And that's, that is grabbing the collar. Grabbing the back of the shoulder pad, bringing them down. Now keep in mind, Saginaw High has not scored a point this season. So here we are. They're inside the middle high 10. First down. So I think they're marking it at the seven, Frank. So again, the quarterback is Larry Atkins, number 19. That was Bada Ford, 24 on the carry. He's in the backfield. Let's see what they do. No room this time. Oh, he's, he's running hard. Give him credit, but middle and high stones him there. And the, looks like the 10, 11 yard line. Well, here's the thing. If if I'm middle and high, I don't want a score to happen here. Right. I want I want to I want to shut him out. I mean, that that becomes the element of pride. It doesn't matter. I don't want to be the first team they score on. Plus, you're probably thinking second half start time too at the running clock. You know? Right. So here we are, second down at the 11 yard line. Saginaw is slow getting these plays, and that's why they've been flagged for a couple of delayed games. And here we go again. They better hustle up. Atkins in the shotgun. Back to pass. Flips it out, incomplete. The pass was intended for number six. Well, he, didn't throw, he, did, he didn't throw it Lindsay. anywhere near number six. And if he had, it probably would have been picked off. <laughs> so that was, that so was now a floater. Third down and 11. Yes. From the 11. So far from what I've seen, looks like uh, body four, number 24, is their best weapon. I mean, he, he runs hard, Frank. I he mean, give him credit. Hard. He doesn't have much blocking in front of him, but he refused to go down. Again, he's in the backfield behind Atkins. So let's see what happens here. Third down. Well, they're going to throw. Atkins, draw, sniffed Terrific out there. Play. By Brennan Malin, number Terrific 30. Terrific play by the middle backer. Yeah. Very disciplined by Malin. Stayed right on the quarterback the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's probably his key. Yep. Do not let, and that surprises me today with the amount of quarterbacks that are running the ball. Money, Jude, and just in our town. And here we are, Frank, free play. So here, here is in the middle of the field, steps up, got the quarterback all the way. Beautiful play. Closes Beautiful fast. Play. So we have a timeout here, Saginaw. Fourth down from their 14 yard line. Was that a design draw, Frank, yes. for the quarterback? Yes. So will they or won't they score here? First points of the season. Middle and high, like you said, they have a lot of pride. Well, they don't want to give up points to Saginaw High. What? 
the only way they're going to score is if they throw a jump ball and the Saginaw guy takes down the rebound. Yeah. But when you have Gordon and Albrecht and Johnstone back there, it's uh, well, you know what they do? They get their hands in on the ball. They get you. They're covered. Right. But as the ball gets there, their hands are in on the ball. They're athletic. Yeah, very athletic. OK, let's see what Saginaw does here. Fourth down and goal. From the 14. Atkins takes a snap. He's got no time. Uh, jump ball. We got a flag in the end zone. Interference. First down. Holdings. Let's see what the official call is here. It looks like it's going to be holding on middle and high. It is holding middle and high. First down. First down at the four yard line. Here you go, Frank. Replay. Atkins throws a jump ball. Number four out there is Lewis Serafin for uh, middle and high. Looks like he grabbed him. So Saginaw, first and goal from the four. Atkins. No, it's fourth down. Fourth down. Oh, fourth down. Fourth you and goal. You don't get a first down. Out of Ford. That's brought down short of the goal line. That number nine on the tackle there, Frank? Number number Colin Powers? Yes. Nice tackle. Save the touchdown. Sure did. That was a one on one touchdown saving tackle there by Powers. Nice job. We squared up nicely, did everything nicely. He, he just didn't wrap him up, but he did enough to stop him from the end zone. Yeah. All right, so Middle Ohio will take possession at its own two yard line. He's got money back in the game at quarterback. They want to get out of this hole. And Johnson at the running back. Yep, Johnson's at running back. Some money back to pass in his end zone. He's looking for room. He's scrambling to his right. He throws. Incomplete. That ball was intended for Eli Gordon. That was a surprise. Yeah, throwing from his own end zone. Throwing from the end zone and and under pressure. Under pressure. That was the, see that that the throwing from the end zone. That's not the surprise. Under pressure. That's the surprise. Here's yeah. the pressure coming from yeah. the outside. Good job of scrambling. Good job of everybody staying with their blocks. I would think at this point you'd want Johnson to carry that ball. We'll see what happens. Money in his own end zone. Gives it to Johnson. He's got a big hole. Head to the sideline. He'll be brought down and pushed out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. So first down, middle and high. Give it to the big fella. And he rambles for about 18 yards. See, see the big fella, he's looking for Don't people. Don't we have a flag on the play, Frank? Yeah, they knocked him out of, out of bounds. When he tackled him and threw him down out of bounds. Oh, was it against Midland? Oh, wow. I thought it was going to be on the yeah. other. I thought it was going to be right here, even though he made holding, contact with them. Holding on Midland, so ball back at about the one-yard line of Midland. So that first down negated on a penalty call. I would think we might see a similar type play, though. Get the ball to 32, let him pound up the middle. Midland second and 11 from its one. Johnson again up the middle. More room to run. He'll be brought down at about the 23 yard line. So first down, Midland. He's pretty good. Yeah, he is He's good. He's pretty good. And he, he's not sure where the end zone is, but he is sure where the other team is. You ever notice he runs? Yeah. Right into the other team. And the thing is, Frank, he does now, have now a full back in front of him. I love this. Yeah, always BYOB, bring your own blocker. <laughs> All right, so here he is right here. Now he gets up in the chute. Okay, let me see. Who can I hit next? You. You're next. Okay, good. You know, he keeps going. Yeah. It, 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 well, he doesn't have the breakaway speed. 
to, that uh, a lot of, but he has power. Money, all Brett. Dances around. He'll be brought Excellent down first. at about the 40 yard line. Another first, first down. down. But again, Frank, you have to give credit to Middle High's offensive line for giving money time to throw, but also Johnson, when he carries the ball, he's not being touched for about four yards right, past the line right. of scrimmage. He gets up into that. He gets up into that scene. This is a very nice pattern mm -hmm. out here. Just a stop pattern. Nice catch. Now a nice little move with the. And watch how many extra yards he's going to get here. Money. Gordon. Oh, through his hands, almost picked off there by Dylan Moore. Incomplete. So it'll be second down and ten. But Gordon should have had that ball. That ball went right through his hands. I know. You know, that's a tough pass. I mean, you're on the left hash and you're throwing to the right hash. So it's really a, a longer pass. And, and that's what they evaluate college quarterbacks on. Can you throw? If you're a high school quarterback and you want to go to college, you have to be able to throw that ball on the line. Second that's 10. That's the evaluator. Johnson, again, up the middle. Stiff arm. Rumbling and. Brought down at the Saginaw 38 yard line. Another first down for Midland High. Johnson racking up yardage tonight against the Trojans. Midland High, hurry up offense, no huddle. They know Saginaw's D is very tired, Frank, and they want to get in one more score for this half ends. I think they should. Money, shotgun. Johnson again. Now that was stiff a arm great, again. Puts that his head was a down. Great cut Barrels back to the 32 yard a line. Terrific cutback move by Johnson. Old school, isn't he? John Riggins type he's guy. He's a beauty. He's a beauty. <laughs> I'll tell you. Now what we haven't seen tonight is money running the ball, handing off. Here comes. Here, now watch, watch this great cut. All right, so the ball goes right stiff there. Stiff arm. I like There's the stiff that arm. cut right there. Push away. Okay, you're gonna now it's your turn to get hit. Thirty. Second and three from the thirty-two. Money fakes it to Johnson this time. He's got all sorts of time. He goes deep to Gordon, who's wide open. He overthrows him. Incomplete. So they went for it all that time. But the ball went over the head of Gordon out of the end zone. So third down and about four yards to go for a first down for the Kimmicks. That was, that was a little bit too much air on that ball. That's the kind of ball you want to just kind of slide in there a little better. Money pitches it to Johnson. He's got room. He cuts upfield. He's at the 20 now. He hurdles one tackler. He barrels into another. He's brought down at about the seven yard line. Johnson, that was another real, first down. That was a real athletic move. Now this is this is a real. First off, it's great blocking off the perimeter. That's the first thing. And now he comes around the corner. See how the blocking is out there. Now he's up into the shoot. There's the the hurdle. And now I'm going to take on a little guy. Yeah, Frank, and, that hurdle. That was a tackler who didn't want to tackle him. And, he didn't have. He didn't even look at him. He just basically fallen at the ground. So here we go. First. Down and goal from about the nine yard line. Money. Johnstone. That's a. Another horse he, call. He didn't whistle him down, did he? Is that a touchdown? We're calling it a middle high touchdown until the ref says otherwise. Nope, I don't know if Johnstone's knee hit the ground. Nobody's raising their hands. Let's see if his knee touches the ground. Frank, they did throw a flag for the horse collar tackle, but did his knee hit the ground? Let's see. All right, there's the horse collar. No, it did not. <laughs> His knee did not touch the ground. Well, we don't have instant replay in high school yet. Yes. Yet. They must have blew the. Great camera work, yes. They blew the play dead, apparently, Frank. Blew the play dead. Johnstone, excellent play. Ball at the five yard line. Timeout. And we have a timeout on the field. Saginaw. Yeah, that was one of those. If they do have replay in high school, you'd be throwing that little red beanie thing on the field and.
Bettner would be saying, his knee didn't hit well, the, the guy, ground. His the knee guy, didn't hit the ground. Well, the guy upstairs would have, would, have, would have hit the buzzer. Here we go, Frank. Replay. Hey, first, it's a simple little out. And the guy gets him up high. Is there any? Oh, his elbow hits the ground. All right, there you go. All right. There you go. All right. So we have to, have to give the referee the credit for doing his yes, job. Yes, he did his job, and I was wrong. But still a great athletic move by Johnstone. All right. First and goal from the Saginaw five-yard line. Zach Wilder is in the backfield along with Johnston. And number 24, this is their, Chase Mobier. This is their power formation. It's uh, an old triangle formation. Usually the power goes right behind the triangle. Look at the Johnson. hole. Johnson, wow. He just walked walks right into in, the huh? end zone. Touchdown, middle and high. Terrific. What blocking. I think we could have run in. <laughs> I don't know. We Frank. could have walked in. Might have pulled a hamstring in about the two. All right, this is Johnson. Terrific, terrific blocking at the point of attack. Look at that. Going left. Look at 55 pushing. Yeah. 55 Keith Haw Keaton Hawking. Just pushing. 33, Zach Wilder blocking well. And, yeah. of course, Mojave in there blocking well. And here comes Fisher again for another uh, extra point attempt. Up. And That's good. good. 44 to 0. Middle and high with 119 left in the first half. Dominating performance by the top ranked team in the state. Oh, Frank. yeah. No On question homecoming about night. It. As you said, a lot of happy parents in the stands tonight. A lot of happy young well, it's, it's, it's a good night. It's a feel good night. Now, think about this, Chris. You've got probably 30, maybe even 40% of your student body at this game involved. Right. I mean, you've got uh, 200 and what, 100, almost 200 member band. You got 20 cheerleaders, 20 pom pom, 40 footballers. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of the homecoming uh, court. Homecoming court. Yeah. And all their parents and all that. So yeah. you've got quite a crowd that are, you know, involved in this activity. And it's a beautiful night. It is. Even though we had to thread a rain earlier, but it is it's, a, it's a good football night. Fisher again, let's see what he does. See, that's the thing. We're gonna see what he does. So you can't plan for anything. This one is in the end zone. Blows it yeah, dead, yes. Dead ball. Number five, Cameron Williams caught that ball in the end zone. Saginaw will take over at its own 20-yard line with 117 left to play in the first half. So entering tonight's game, Frank, Tommy Johnstone was second in the league in scoring with 36 points. I would say he might be number one now in the, in the league. He had 24 receptions, league high, coming in with 340 yards. Jude Johnson, 352 yards coming into the game with five TDs, but that's, again, increasing after tonight's first half. So Atkins, again, at quarterback for Saginaw High. Back to pass. Brought down, sacked by number 85, Brady Richards, in on the play. Brought down at the 14-yard line, so that'll bring a second and 16 for Saginaw High. With Saginaw less High, than a minute to play. Saginaw had good teams. They had some very good offensive line coaches. Mm -hmm. And right now, when they've, and, and when they've had bad teams, they've had some very bad line coaches. You know, and you can see it right now that their line is poorly coached. I mean, Midland is just running and doing exactly what they want to do here. Atkins takes the ball, brought down, a hard hit. Number 30, Brennan Malin. 
that linebacker position. Malin came up and just stuck him for a loss at the 12 yard line. So third down and about 18 yards to go. We have coming up on less than 10 seconds left in the half. I'm not running a play. If I was sagging out, start jogging to the locker room. I think it's time for a fresh start. And two, one, halftime, Frank. Yep. 44 to zero, Midland High. After the first half of tonight's homecoming game at Midland Community Stadium. Excellent performance by the Chemics. A predictable performance by Saginaw High. <laughs> uh, simply because that's exactly what they've done all year. Right. So, you know, you've got to appreciate the situation. And now people are going to be very happy because we're going to have a spectacular halftime. One of the best. Yep. One of the best. All right. Stay tuned for halftime festivities. Frank and I'll be back after that's done. See you then. And Mrs. Karen Welser with percussion specialist Judith Peterson. It's the Midland High School Chemic Marching Band. Band, take the field. This year's band features drum majors Hannah Worley, Ryan Kuchek, Tara Vilma, and Ashley, and Ashley Welsh. Welsh. Our halftime half and home celebration. Celebration. celebration begins with our fight song. Band, are you ready? Direction of News Crystal Forsberg. This award winning group is an outstanding addition to this season's halftime shows. And tonight, the band of the Pom Pom Squad will rock you to Fall Out Boy's big 2008 hit, I Don't Care.
And now, the moment you have been waiting for, our 2019 Homecoming Court. Introducing, Introducing our Midland High School Midland principal, High school principal Ms. Ms. Speaker, Speaker, escorted by Palmer Willa Cook and cheerleader Autumn Pointer. Our freshman representative, Taylor Brought, is escorted by her parents, Tina and Kyle Brought. Taylor is a captain of the JV cheer team and plays on the freshman volleyball team. She is also a member of student council. Freshman representative Hunter Blackhurst is escorted by his parents, Danielle and Kurt Blackhurst. Hunter is currently a member of the freshman football team. He plans on trying out for the MHS bowling team in November. Sophomore representative Grace Lloyd is escorted by her parents, Nicole and Chuck Lloyd. Grace is currently on the varsity chemic volleyball team and the JV tennis team at Midland High. Sophomore representative Tim Vocal is escorted by his parents, Katie and Brian Vocal. Tim is currently a member of the chemic football and baseball teams. Junior representative Olivia DiPiero is escorted by her parents, Nicole and Mike DiPiero. Olivia is a member of Varsity Volleyball and the team captain. She also participates in the Symphonic Orchestra and Meister Singers. Junior Representative Ian Porritt is escorted by his parents, Carolyn and Tim Porritt. Ian is a member of the MHS Cross Country Team Esports and Robotics. He is also a member of the band's percussion section. Senior Representative Sophia Donahue is escorted this evening by her mother, Ginger Donahue, and brothers, Zach and Cam Donahue, who are filling in for her late father, Rex Donahue. Sophia is currently involved in the National Honor Society and is on the varsity volleyball team. Senior Representative Brady Woods is being escorted by his mother, Heather Gould, and father, Keith Woods. Brady is part of the National Honor Society, Commencement Committee, Varsity Baseball, and is the sports editor for the MHS school newspaper, The Focus. Senior Representative Taryn Vilma is being escorted by her mom, Jana Lubkert, and father, Junior Vilma. Taryn has served as class representative on student council all four years. She's also a drum major for the MHS marching band, senior captain of the varsity soccer team, a chemic ambassador, and a member of NHS, BPA, and SAVE clubs. Senior Representative Sam Yoder is escorted by his parents, Alyssa and Jeffrey Yoder. Sam is cross-country captain in the band and a National Honor Society member. Senior Representative Maddie Dollard is being escorted by her parents, Kathy and Ben Dollard. Maddie is captain of the girls' swim team and a member of student council, Key Club, BPS, and NHS. Senior Representative Carter Hazen is being escorted onto the field by his parents, Natalie and Greg Hazen. Carter is an avid golfer and is a four-year varsity player. He is also a photographer for the Focus newspaper and a member of the National Honor Society. Carter is also the student section leader. And finally, the king and queen of the 2019 homecoming court, Tegan Carius and Andrew Chapman. Tegan Carius is being escorted by her parents, Tammy and Blink Bergeron. Throughout Tegan's high school career, she has been involved in numerous activities. She is one of the varsity swim captains, key club co-president, a member of BPA and a big sister through Midland's Big Brothers and Big Sisters program. Andrew Chapman is escorted by his parents, Jewel and Johnny Chapman, and brothers Avery and Aaron Chapman. Andrew is a member of the Midland Inclusion Council, MHS Bible Club, Ultimate Frisbee Club, Save Club, and also participates on the cross country and track and field teams. He is currently the student body president, student liaison for Project 111, and a MASC board delegate.
Ladies and gentlemen, our 2019 Homecoming Court. And now, the Midland High School Fight Song. like to bring your attention to one of the school district's most successful fundraisers, the Chemic Music Discount Card. 100% of the funds raised go to the Midland High School Music Program and the discounts that are on the card pay for themselves many times over. Unlike some discount cards, this card can be used over and over again for the entire year. If you would like to purchase a card, they are $10 and can be purchased by contacting any MHS music student or director. If you miss out, our students will be selling these cards door-to-door -door in the city of Midland on Thursday, October 3rd. The Chemic Band would also like to invite everyone to our annual marching band exhibition at 6 p.m. Wednesday, October 16th. Bands from all over mid-Michigan will be performing along with your very own Chemic Marching Band. This year's Chemic Band will be performing our entire circus show, so come out and enjoy some great entertainment. And now, our homecoming parade results. Among the clubs, third place, trap shooting. Second place, GSA. And first place for the clubs, the National Honor Society, NAHS. NAHS. <laughs> for the classes, fourth place goes to the seniors. Third place goes to the sophomores. Second place goes to the junior class. And first place goes to the freshmen. I thought there was a print printout, but it's N-A-H-S. That's hard for me to say. N-A-H, I want to say N-H-S.
All right, welcome back everyone to the second half. It's tonight's homecoming game between Midland High and Saginaw High. Midland High leads 44 to zero, which means there'll be a running clock starting the second half. And Frank, uh, what more can you say about uh, what, what we're seeing tonight? Well, it was a dominating performance as we expected from the Chemics. Saginaw High still is uh, scoreless for the year. So we know they have troubles offensively. They're given a, a valiant effort defensively, but it just they're always so much in the hole that middle and high really doesn't have to uh, extend themselves. They got, you're always in four down territory. So that's the way it, it, it will be. And that's probably the way it's going to go. So we're going to do some replays here of the first half key plays, which are our highlights. And this is the first highlight right on the opening kickoff. Johnson takes the ball up the middle. Uh, one arm tackle there, a, a tag there, and of course, with within seconds, the game's over. Right. I mean, so there you go. So here's a great uh, fumble, questionable fumble, uh, potential to be picked up, tackle, and then here is uh, Demarco Warren around the corner, and that's uh, a, an excellent run by him. And then here is a kick, and it's a fumble recovery here by. Uh, Gordon Gordon picks it up and uh, just a great pass into a corner where nobody's covered Johnstone. This is the safety and uh, beautifully done by Ty Fagan. And he makes the, makes the tackle. He's, he was untouched virtually the whole first half. This is an excellent pass by money and a terrific reception by Tommy Johnstone in the end zone. Three touchdowns covered. first half for Johnstone. Right. And here's a quick pitch again by uh, Warren making a play behind some pretty good blocking gets in the end zone and uh, got another touchdown. And this is this is Johnson running like Johnson runs. Uh, reminds you a little bit of Larry Zonka if yeah, back in the 70s. Yeah. Both hands on the ball and please get out of my way <laughs> or else or else. <laughs> yeah that's a terrific run right there. So. Those are our halftime highlights, and yeah. uh, you've got some stats from the first half. Yeah, sure do. From Dan Chalk to Midland Daily News, we have Al Money. He's 5 of 9 for 80 yards, two passing TDs, one interception. Drew Johnson, 11 carries, 112 yards with a TD. DeMarco Warren has two rushing touchdowns. Tommy Johnstone, as we mentioned earlier, has three touchdowns, two catches for 43 yards, two TDs, and a 72-yard kickoff return. And Frank, while we're at it here, I'm going to mention the fact that uh, you and I are both volunteers, and the coverage of this Midland High football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, sign up for our new MCTV producer workshop. You will learn how to be a producer, create a studio program, use professional video cameras, and edit your video using Final Cut Pro editing software. Also, learn how your creation can be made into a podcast or video on YouTube. The cost is just $45, which includes the annual access user fee. Call 837-3474 to sign up. You can learn more about MCTV at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov slash MCTV or follow us on Facebook. Frank, how many years have you been doing MCTV now? I've been doing MCTV for 16 years. 16 years. Yeah, okay. Been great, great. Lots of fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. I remember, uh, I, I want to say I go back 20 plus years. I mean, I remember doing your games against Josie back in the day, and uh, it's, just, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? If you love high school sports, this, you know, this it's is perfect a lot of for fun. you guys like this you and I. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Keys to the game. Let's see how we did. Okay, Midland, score early, score often. Well, okay, <laughs> check. Yeah, I check. Mean, no question there. Check me. So far, again, we're avoiding any key injuries, um, and we've had kick game perfection. I mean, Max Fisher, perfect on every extra point. Uh, terrific kickoffs, and Midland hasn't had a punt, and their punt return has been very good. Saginaw does not slow the game down. They're playing uh, uh, what I call Madden football. Let's just go on out and, and see where we go. They do not play tough defense, and they had to play tough defense. They got some guys that are trying hard. 
But Midland's offense is pounding on them. And while they haven't had the turnovers, except for the one fumble, no, I take that back. Two key fumbles, one on the kickoff and uh, one on the uh, uh, toss that is questionable. Yeah. But we've had some silly penalties. Yeah. Uh, too many men on the field, uh, offsides, delay, uh, game. delay of games. Yeah. You know, so those are crucial issues that if you're the coach at Saginaw, those are three things you want to clean up. Well, Frank, I don't know if we're going to have time at the end of the broadcast to talk about it, but as we go through the second half here, I do want to hear your thoughts on Midland High versus Mount Pleasant next week. Okay. That'll be a great ball game. So Fisher getting ready to kick off here. As we mentioned earlier, this will be a running clock starting the third quarter. What a weapon to have in Fisher, isn't he? Absolutely. I mean, kickoffs, field goals. And an outstanding defensive player. Yeah. And he probably could be a great receiver. Here we go. Start of the sec second half. Fisher's ball will go out of bounds. Flag goes up on the play. Now, I would say Metner doesn't like seeing that happen on his kickoffs. Keep the ball in play. And if you're going to kick it, kick it into the end zone <laughs> so you get a touchback. Yeah, he's having a little conversation with uh, Max right now about that. Max was trying to kick it in the corner, and there was nobody in the corner to right. kick to. So Saginaw will take over at their own 35-yard line after Fisher's errant kick. So let's see who Saginaw will bring out a quarterback, and it's Atkins, number 19, Larry Atkins. And I've been impressed with number 24, Jamel Bodiford, Frank. I mean, if he had some blocking, he, he would be a nice back. He'd be a nice back. Yes, he would. Atkins back to pass, lobs it to number five. Cameron Williams incomplete. Those are the passes that as a defensive backfield coach, you're saying to yourself, we got to catch those. Yeah. We need to catch them. That's a lollipop. Yeah, into the it's secondary. tapped up in the air. And, you know, where is the safety that's coming over to catch the tip ball? Normally on incomplete pass, the clock stops, but in a running clock situation, the clock continues, and that's what's happening right now as we're approaching 11.20 mark of this third quarter. So Atkins, second down and 10. He's got four wide receivers, three to his left. The snap, the toss, Bodford. Can't handle it. Fumble on the play. Let's see who gains possession. I think Saginaw has retained possession. Yes. Saginaw recovers the ball at its own 25-yard line. That was number 19 Atkins on the recovery. They mark it at 29. So we're going to have third down and 16 yards to go. Aaron pitch by Atkins to Bodiford on the play. Fumble and uh, Saginaw now. At its own 29-yard line, third down. See, they got three receivers here to the left and a single receiver on the right. The three guys on the left are a little confused. Frankie has no time to throw. Those guys don't have time to get down the field. Now he's got running room, Atkins. 35-yard line brought down hard by Gordon. Laid him out. Atkins says, nice tackle, and gives him a slap of the hands there. That was a hard hit. Was Maybe the hit. hardest of the night. Here we go, Frank. Replay. Well, they, again, they're allowing him to get loose. See, they're right there. Uh, Fagan loud, get, gets depth. And here, here comes Gordon coming up. And that's a really good tackle. Fourth down. Saginaw. Punt formation. They better hustle up. Fourth and ten. Bottom forward on the punt. 
kicks it to Gordon. Gordon lets it bounce, picks it up at the 27 yard line. He's at the 40, cuts back at the 45. Now he's at the 50, cuts at the 50. He'll be brought down at the Saginaw 43 yard line. Nice return on the play nice by return, Gordon. Nice return, excellent return. He had to make too many cuts. He did. He couldn't get, couldn't get clear to the end zone. Looks like he had room to cut over to the far end uh, right. sideline, though. So this is a pretty good step right in here, and you can see where he just runs by them. Frank, we have a hard pouring down rain right now as Wagner hands off to number 25, Timmy Kiffmiller, brought down at the 36, and it is pouring down rain. The band members are right. Well, the band, first off, the uniforms can't get wet. Right. It's hard to recover from, and your instruments are so valuable that they can't get wet. <laughs> so I can see that, and the band members, uh, they're in a sprint right now. Sprint. Looks Attaboy. like a few of them could play football, Frank. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, a few of them look like they got some wheels. Wagner under center. Hands off to Kiff Miller again. Kiff Miller brought down at about the 32-yard line. Now, in this situation, you're saying to yourself as a coach, okay, we're going to milk this clock to no end because, first off, the weather is awful, <laughs> and I don't want to get wet as the coach. Right. You know? <laughs> And so I got a running clock, and I'm going to make use of that running clock. Well, circling back to your one of the keys of the game is injury, too. Rain and slipping, right. and, you right. know, you want to avoid that as much as possible. So Wagner takes a snap, and he'll run it this time up the middle. Pushes his way down to about the 25-yard line. He'll be short of a first down, though. So fourth down. What do you think? Get Fisher a chance to kick a field goal or go for it, Frank? This is uh, second down. They had oh, first oh. down on the other one. My bad. No, this is uh, just pound it in there. Take your 40 seconds. Keep the clock running. So second down and two from the 26. Wagner. Round left in. Looks like he got the first down. He looks like it's yes, his first down. Progress will be marked at about the 21 yard line, which is a first down, middle and high. Middle and high gets in that little offset formation, quarterback and shotgun. You know it's gonna they're running it there. Wagner is a junior, 6'1, 180 pounds. This time he's under center. Hands it off to Kith Miller. Running right, he's got room, he's got room. He's gonna be brought down at about the five yard line. Kiff Miller. First down, middle and high. It'll be first and goal from the five. Nice run by Kith Good Miller. Good run and excellent blocking at the point of attack. Big number 76, Hunter Cobb was one of those you're talking about, Frank, the tackle there on the right right side. And Gabe Smith is the left guard, or right guard. Wagner to Kiff Miller. This time he stoned right at the five yard line, brought down. Nice tackle by Saginaw High. That's number 24, Bada Ford. He's the tailback we've been talking about. He's also a very good defensive player. Well, how about that? There's our, There's our crew. crew right there. Our volunteer crew working hard tonight. Second down from about the six yard line. Wagner hands it to Kiff Miller. Stopped at about the four yard line. Nice tackle there by number eight, Jamonte York. So third down now, a goal for Midland. 4.30 left in the third quarter. Well, 
I'm going to run this one right because Cobb has dominated his man. Mm -hmm. He has just dominated the man that's over him. And I would get in Cobb's pocket and run in the end zone. <laughs> Here's that power formation you've been talking about, Frank. Three backs in the backfield. Kiff Miller again, this time running behind number 63, Ethan Church. Touchdown, Kiff Miller. Midland High nice now job. hits the 50 point mark. Excellent blocking, and Kiff Miller scores. A touchdown to give Midland a 50 to zero lead at this point at 3.58 mark in the third quarter. And here comes Fisher to tack on the extra point with money holding. Perfect. Frank, do you see who is snapping uh, on these extra point attempts? That's number 11. That's the quarterback. That's Jarrett Wagner. <laughs> When's the last time you seen a quarterback snapping on extra points? Well, it was an offsides. They going for two? And they're going for two. A little confusion here by middle high on what to well, do. The guys who Lewandowski running on the field as well as Owen Hacker. I think they're gonna need a timeout, Frank. They better get one here because they threw they threw the extra point. Oh, I don't know. I see what they're doing. The second extra point team is in there now. Okay, this is Ethan Church on for the extra point with Wagner holding. No good. Wagner or Church recovers that miss, mishandled snap. <coughs> so the score will remain 50 to zero, middle and high. Okay, this is a nice little run. And, and we run this, we'll watch, the, watch the hole over on this side and watch how they're able to push this line back. And these two backs come up here and make a nice play. He gets up in there and runs the play. Very nice. Look at the push. There's 63 right up in the chute. And see what I mean by getting back? Yeah. See what I mean by I have to get in the pocket of the lead back, and that's, right. that's exactly what happened right there. But, Frank, you know, you going back to your talking about coach, getting your line coached up right is Saginaw High's linemen were standing up. <laughs> and if the ball's at the four-yard line, you've got to get low, right? I mean, Midland's just pushing them back. They have no chance to stop a run like that. Number 16, DeMarco Warren has uh, got a shoe off here, Frank. It looks like he hurt his ankle or foot. He's on, on the track. Here's the kickoff by Fisher. Caught at the nine yard line by Detritus Lindsay. Good coverage, good coverage. See who's in the middle of that? Johnson, yep. Drew Johnson. As well as Tommy Johnstone. Tommy Johnstone. I mean, see, they got they got their starter on their defensive starters on that kickoff team, and now you're always pinned back. Very difficult to get good field position when you have a good kicker with height. So your guys are down there, and right. and they're good tacklers. Okay, let's talk a little bit about next week's game, Middle Mount Pleasant. What do you like? What have you seen tonight that you like going forward? playing that game against Mount Pleasant? Well, first off, I like money. Okay. You know, I, I mean, I think money is such a difference maker that that, that game going. on. And Midland secondary is pretty good coverage, mm -hmm. and their down linemen play tough, and that's exactly what you have to do to beat Mount Pleasant. Again, uh, Mount Pleasant's only had a couple of really good games, tough games. Our league is not the strongest once you get outside of Midland and Mount Pleasant. The other side's much more difficult yeah. with uh, Davis and Lapeer, Lapeer Graham Blank, yeah. even Powers. Yeah. So this side is relatively weak. 
So Midland had really, in reality, has two games left to play. They got Mount Pleasant and they got Dow. Yep. They got through the one semi-tough game against Heritage last week, and that game was a lot closer than the score. So, you know, a game against Mount Pleasant, Mount Pleasant's a very disciplined team, and they play good, hard defense. So it, it's going to be a great game. Yeah. Time out on a play, and play before that, that was uh, – Cornerback Lewis Serafin making a solo tackle. But Saginaw did pick up a first down at its own 30-yard line. 59 seconds left here in the third quarter. I mean, Midland and Mount Pleasant have just a, oh, we have a break in the play. Looks like maybe lightning or thunder. And the game is coming to a halt. At the with 59 seconds left to play in the third quarter. What's going on here, Frank? Game's over. Game is over. Why? They've called the game. Saginaw has called the game. That's what's happened. When is the last time you've seen that? I've seen it before. The game has reached a point where... They don't want to get hurt? Or, well... Why keep playing? Why keep playing? Well, this is the first for me. You've been at a lot longer I've, than me. I've had but. this happen. <laughs> I've had this happen. Well. Yeah, I've had it happen where, you know, it's over. And it is. It because was over. What early. happens is you've got, you don't know how long the delay is going to take. Mm -hmm. Could be another delay on top of that. And, and why? And so with that result, you say, okay, 50 to nothing. That's it. Sounds good. Who's doing the promo, me or? No, they are. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. You're watching this Midland High versus Saginaw High homecoming football game on the MCTV network. MCTV's channels can be found on Charter Communications cable channels 188 and 191 in Midland. You can also find MCTV under channel 99 on AT&T's UVerse. Check out MCTV's website at cityofmidlandmi.gov slash MCTV for playback dates and times. More dates and times to follow on MPSTV 190. You can also view this program online at the Midland Public Schools YouTube channel. Well, again, MC. MCTV is a volunteer production, and the coverage of this Middle High football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, sign up for our new MCTV producer workshop. You'll learn how to be a producer, create a studio program, use professional video cameras, and edit your video using Final Cut Pro editing software. Also, learn how your creation can be made into a podcast or video on YouTube. The cost is just $45, which includes the annual access user fee. Call 837-3474 to sign up. You can learn more about MCTV at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov backslash MCTV or follow us on Facebook. And Frank, here we okay, go. Let's take a look at tonight's highlights. And there are many. And again, we're going to go back to the first half, opening kickoff. And it, it, this is really a great run. I mean, he got up in the shoot and exactly what you wanted. You had good blocking at the point of attack. And he runs into the end zone. And then this is that <laughs> questionable play. Yeah. But here you go. And he tried to pick it up, did pick it up. And, and went on. That, that's a good deal. And then this is DeMarco Warren. And uh, I like the way he, he has a little bounce yep. to him. Nose for the he end got, zone. Got in the end zone, right? Great play. And this is that kick, kickoff. Again, a threat. The ball's high enough and comes down hard enough. This is where money scrambles. This is where he's at his best. Yeah. He scrambles around and he's able to find that open. And again, notice how soft that toss was. Yeah. Great. Uh, safety by Vegan here. Vegan here, where he makes a great play. 
And they didn't block him all night. I didn't understand that. Yeah. But uh, you pointed that out. And, and then here we go with a nice pass. Again, on the money, by money, to uh, Johnstone. Johnstone. Nice catch. And then this is, again, DeMarco Warren getting in the end zone. You know, he, he needed to really sprint for the corner. He kind of danced around a little bit. There's no dancing with this guy. <laughs> you know, this is... It's just let's get in the end zone and get going. And again, here is Kiff Miller uh, scoring a touchdown at, in the second half. He's got to complete the scoring. And that's the end of our scoring. Yeah. So a dominating, dominating performance tonight by Midland High. The Kimmicks win 50 to zero over Saginaw High. Thank you everybody for watching tonight's broadcast. On behalf of Frank Altimore and myself, Chris Stevens, have a good night.